Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at 3D printing. In this video we'll talk about my first experience with 3D printing, advice and tips from a complete newbie like me, and what to expect, what you need, what it's like and what to look out for. So I got contacted by the guys at GTech and they obviously saw what a wonderful channel this is and what a beautiful 3D artist I am. So they said, you need a 3D printer. So they sent me the A20. So first of all, thanks to GTech for sending me the A20. I'm very impressed. It was actually fairly straightforward once I got the idea about it to put together and it printed really well straight off the bat. Straight away I could see when putting this together that it was a really solid build. Everything seemed to work nicely together and fit nicely together and it seemed really robust. Now it's worth pointing out here that if you're completely new to 3D printing, it's not as straightforward as I wanted to believe. I thought it was going to be a bit like a 2D printer, a paper printer, and you know you plug it in and you load the drivers on and you press print. I thought maybe there'd be a bit of putting it together, but not as much as there is. So it's still a kind of hobbyist thing. Um, you have to be a bit of a tinkerer, uh, a tinkerer as in a sort of DIY type person. If you're a little scared of putting things together DIY or breaking things, that sort of thing, then it might not be for you to be honest. And that's my only complaint of GTEC was the instructions I felt were a bit poor. It had literally, I think, three pages where it felt like it was put this big support on, plug the wires in, start printing. And it really didn't give me much hope. There was a video to go with it. I scanned the QR code and got the video, but the video was a little bit vague. For a complete newbie like me, it was tough. I didn't even know which way round, which end was the front. So when it says put the thing on top, uh, you're thinking, well, which way round do I put it? Because I have no idea. So look out for those sort of things. If you're completely new to it, then I suggest going to YouTube. There were some good videos on YouTube, generally fairly good videos on YouTube. But again, these are kind of experts who do 3D printing quite a lot. So they're not really uh, thinking that they need to explain which way round things goes. They, they think it's all automatic and we should know that already. And even when it came to things like plugging in the wires, I was thinking, well, which wire? Uh, <laughs> how am I supposed to know? Uh, the wires do have labels on and it's sort of X, M, and if, then you suddenly realize, ah, X, that's the X axis. So it's going across this way. And of course you have to figure out which way is X axis for them, you know. <laughs> so having said that, looking back, it feels like it was fairly straightforward. But at the time, it just felt really intimidating. So that was just the putting it together. And then I knew there was gonna be a sort of software scenario that I was gonna to have to work out and a calibration scenario. So I went ahead and tried to calibrate. That was surprisingly easy. That was really straightforward. You sort of press move to this corner and sort of measure it up with a little bit of paper. And that was actually really easy and I didn't have a problem. I was a bit scared thinking, well, I've blatantly done this wrong because that was too easy, but it came out okay in the end. And that's a point, let's show the beautiful owl that I have modeled. If you want to know more about how to model this, then look up my sculpting tutorial playlist. You probably can't see this out at all because it's completely overexposed. I like to have um, really bright lights to show how unwrinkly I am. But yes, a beautiful owl, and I'll put a bit more in the background so you can see it in a bit more detail. It really did feel very exciting to finally see my 3D models being printed out for myself. I've made 3D models before for other people to 3D print, but I've never actually printed one myself, so this was quite a breakthrough for me. So the fact that it was so easy to calibrate, I think must be a thumbs up to the GTEC team, because I was expecting lots of problems there, lots of failed attempts, but it was literally calibrate, uh, plug it in once I've figured out the software, and away you go, and it printed my beautiful owl. So what if you're a 3D artist like myself? Well, obviously you're not as good as me because I'm just brilliant, but you're trying, and you want to go from Blender to the 3D printer. Obviously I'm joking there, by the way, just to make sure and clarify that. I don't want any comments below saying you arrogant, yeah. anyway. So you wanna go from Blender to the 3D printer, what are you gonna need? Well, first in Blender, I do have some tips and a video about what you need to set up for 3D print. It's a lot easier since that video because we've got things like the remesh in sculpt mode. So you just have to go in, join everything together, remesh it, and you're pretty much good to go. The important thing is that it's non-manifold, so it doesn't have any holes in, and it doesn't have any overlapping geometry. So you can't have sort of like a box and then another box just overlapping each other. You have to sort of remesh them so it, there's no overlap or it's got a sort of solid inside, if that makes sense. Then from Blender, you export it as something like an STL, that's the most common format and it works well. 
then you need to take it into a program called a slicer and that kind of gets it ready for your 3D printer. The program I was using was Ultimaker Cura 4.8 and it's a free program which I'm delighted to hear. And that was fairly straightforward as well. It was a touch intimidating to start with, but I again looked at another YouTube video, found one, it was really straightforward. You pretty much just open the STL file. You do have to rescale it for some reason. The blender scale comes out really tiny, even though my object was supposed to be like two meters. And I thought, oh no, that's going to mess it all up. It ended up being tiny. So I'm not sure what's going on with the scale aspect of Blender into these programs. But even though you just resize it and you're pretty much good to go, uh, there are a few intricacies you need to know, like uh, understanding what slicing is and uh, things like supports, but you'll probably get there with a little bit of experience. But generally speaking, it was fairly straightforward from Blender, non-manifold, into this slicer program, Ultimaker Cura 4.8. And then you have to say which printer you're using, so I just picked mine from the list and it knew exactly how to sort of turn that file into my print file. I put it on the little mini SD card, micro SD card, plugged it into the side of the printer, and then sort of nervously pressed print. <laughs> Obviously I put a time lapse of printing in the background, I might have even shown it already. So in the end it was a fairly painless process, and what I think is a pretty good result for a first print. The only bit that I found difficult was actually putting the printer together, but actually that wasn't too bad. Again, now I'm looking back on it. So I asked GTEC what was special about this A20 printer and what to look out for. And they said it's really important to have a solid, stable printing platform. And that's vital so your prints don't distort as they're being built. They're also experts in making the filament, apparently widely acclaimed. And obviously the filament is the stuff that the model is built from. So that's all important. And the other thing to look out for is a good quality extruder. That's the bit that the filament comes out of because you don't want it clogging up. I also asked GTEC what advice did they have for beginners. They said joining forums and communities will help a lot because you'll get lots of your questions answered and you'll get ideas and feedback. So again, it kind of shows it's a hobbyist DIY kind of scene that you're getting into with the 3D printing. I also asked them how beginners can look after their printer so it always runs smoothly. They said you should clean the extruder and print hotbed after each print. Keep the printer fixed to the table, don't move the printer anywhere. They also said don't speed up the print process as that can affect the print really badly, but I couldn't see any way to do that anyway. So would I recommend the GTEC A20? Yes, I definitely would. Just watch out for those difficulties when you're putting it together if you're a complete newbie like me. But generally, it's really good build quality. The print came out much better than I expected, first time of asking, so I'm really pleased and really impressed. And lastly, would I recommend people getting into 3D printing? Well, definitely, it was very exciting to finally see my 3D model being printed out in real life. So if you're a 3D artist, I can definitely say it's well worth it. There is that sort of hobbyist aspect to it, that sort of DIY aspect to it. So you might want to get involved in the community. I can see it taking up quite a lot of time and being a time consuming thing. So you might want to be aware of that. So I hope this has helped anybody that's thinking of getting into the 3D printing game. Thank you very much to GTEC once again. Fantastic printer, thoroughly recommended. And thanks to you guys for watching. See you next time.